이스라엘 선교 전문 방송 브랜드 TV에서 진행하는 이스라엘 회복 순례 2023년 지난 봄에 이어 올 가을에도 또다시 출발합니다. 우선 2023년 11월 24일부터 12월 2일까지 8박 9일간 진행하는 올리브 코스는 예루살렘의 올리브 산과 갈릴리 호스 같은 기본적인 성질은 물론이고요. 매일매일 메시아닉 주 교회와 사역자들을 찾아가서 만납니다. 모처럼 찾아간 이스라엘, 그곳에서 죽은 돌들만 찾아다니는 것이 아니라 현재 이스라엘의 회복의 현장에서 예수의 복음을 전하며 그 땅을 회복시키고 있는 메시아닉 사역자들의 사역 현장을 찾아서 그들의 사역 보고와 간증을 들으며 그들의 손을 붙잡고 기도하는 시간을 가지는 것이죠. 뿐만 아니라 메시아닉 주와 함께 예루살렘 성 앞에서 찬양하며 춤을 추는 아주 환상적인 시간을 가지려고 합니다. 또 시간이 될 때마다 아침에 이스라엘에 관한 강의를 제가 직접 진행하고요. 또 매일매일 그 현장에서도 특별 강의를 진행하면서 뜨거운 감동과 은혜의 시간을 가지려고 합니다. 12월 1일부터 12월 9일까지 8박 9일 동안 진행하는 무화과 구수는 이스라엘의 더 특별한 경험을 기대하는 분들을 위해서 마련했는데요. 무화과 코스에서도 역시 기본적인 성지들을 방문하기는 하지만 좀더 이스라엘의 깊숙한 곳을 들여다보기 위해서 유대인들이 자주 찾는 재래시장을 방문하여 그들의 삶의 모습을 이해하고 예루살렘과 테라비브의 24시간 기도타워를 방문하여 뜨겁게 이스라엘을 위해서 기도하며 갈릴리 호수에서의 청소하는 시간 뿐만 아니라 네기부 사막의 베드윈 텐트에서 하룻밤을 보내면서 모다 꿀을 피워놓고 사막의 별을 지붕삼아 찬양을 하며 광야에서의 깊은 영성의 아주 환상적인 시간을 가질 것입니다. 이스라엘의 메시아닉 주들은 정통 유대인들의 공격으로 인해서 그 어느 때보다도 지금 가장 외롭고 힘든 시기를 보내고 있습니다. 우리가 이번에 찾아가서 그들을 위로하고 격려하는 시간이 되기를 바랍니다. 그리고 그동안 멈춰졌던 예시와 하마시아를 찬양하는 찬양 소리와 기도 소리가 온 이스라엘 땅에 다시 울려 퍼지도록 우리가 가서 함께 외칩시다. 이스라엘은 무엇보다도 우리의 찬양 소리와 기도 소리가 간절히 필요한 때이니까요. 여러분이 그 공간을 채워 주셔야 합니다. 그리고 지난 3년 동안 코로나로 인해서 문이 굳게 닫혔던 이스라엘의 문이 열리면서 지금 전 세계의 순례객들이 이스라엘로 몰려들고 있습니다. 그러다 보니까 항공료며 호텔비 등 모든 비용이 천정부지로 올라갔지만 저희는 그럼에도 불구하고 대한항공 직항편과 시설 좋은 호텔을 예전보다 오히려 더 저렴한 가격으로 세팅해서 이스라엘에서의 모든 시간이 아름다운 시간으로 기억 남을 수 있도록 준비했습니다. 무조건 이스라엘로 가는 것만이 중요한 것이 아닙니다. 가서 무엇을 보느냐, 누구를 만나느냐가 더욱 중요한 것이죠. 그리고 더 중요한 것은 누구와 함께 가느냐가 중요합니다. 지금까지 87번의 이스라엘 여행을 다녀오고 이스라엘 관련 책만 20여 권쓴 저는 짧은 시간 안에 어디를 가서 무엇을 보고 누구를 만나야 하는지 누구보다도 더잘 알고 있습니다. 이번에 여러분이 이스라엘로 직접 가서 그 땅을 밟아보고 그들을 만나보고 현장에서 기도하는 일들은 여러분의 신앙생활에서 가장 소중하고 의미 있는 시간들 그리고 이 시간 하나님이 정말 기대하고 그리워하는 시간이 될 것입니다. 그리고 그런 시간이 될수 있도록 저와 브레드TV는 최선을 다해서 준비하겠습니다. 여러분 저와 함께 이스라엘로 가시죠. 제가 여러분을 하나님의 눈동자 이스라엘로 안내하겠습니다. 그리고 이스라엘은 갈수 있을 때 가야 합니다. 다음으로 미루면 또 언제 갈수 있을지 모르니까요. 지금 이스라엘은 그 어느 때보다도 여러분의 간절한 기도가 가장 필요한 때입니다. 
지금 브레드 TV 홈페이지에서 등록하십시오. 늦어지면 자리가 없을 수도 있습니다. 프라임미스터네티냐후스모멘터스트립투더유나이티스테이츠투미트위스프레젠트바이든어더월리더스앤일론머스크디플로마틱브레이크투즈파이브아메리칸스리처트투더유에스프롬이란이안프리즈먼트
ancient Jewish and biblical history. So tell us about the biblical history. So Jericho, of course, is most famous for being the place where the Jewish Jews coming from Egypt first entered the land of Israel, encircled the city seven times, and with the blowing of a ram's horn, a shofar, brought down the walls of Jericho. It's also mentioned numerous other times in the Bibles. Elisha the prophet was there, many other prophets. In the Gospels, Jesus is recorded as having walked there. And all of that history has been completely erased from the Palestinian history of Jericho, which UNESCO just voted to support and endorse. So what, does Pal what do Palestinians say their history is there? So they just say it's an important world site, which is true, and they skip this entire part of the history. And not only are they doing that, they're on the ground destroying the ancient Jewish antiquities in that area now with the approval of the United Nations. There are ancient Hasmonean palaces there. King Herod had an extraordinary palace there, a series of palaces, at the time of Jesus, at the time of the Second Temple, and the Palestinian Authority is literally building houses and plowing over those areas because they want to completely erase the Judeo-Christian record of history. And it starts before, they actually say that when Joshua came into the land of Israel, whoever it was, they don't name the group, fought with the Canaanite city-states of Palestine. Even though Palestine was a name invented by the Romans only over a thousand years later. So they, it is a complete erasure, an ethnic cleansing of Jews from history, combined with a destruction of uh, archaeology, which is now being done with the United Nations approval, and worse now, with United States taxpayer dollars. UNESCO is a famously anti-Semitic organization. They have, in the past, passed resolutions denying the Jewish history of the Temple Mount, calling the Tomb of the Patriarchs a Palestinian site with no Jewish connection. And as a result of that, the United States, six years ago, quit UNESCO. Just a few months ago, they rejoined, paid up their dues. America pays about 22% of the UNESCO dues. Uh, on the idea that UNESCO is going to stop with the erasure of biblical history, the erasure of the Jews, and they're, of course, at it again, doing so especially on the Jewish high holidays. Uh, on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish high holiday, the Jews sound a shofar. They blow a ram's horn, which is symbolic of many things, including the ram's horn that was blown in the city of Jericho by Joshua. And even as the Jews are blowing, were blowing that horn, the UN was destroying the walls of Jericho all over again, destroying, literally helping the Palestinians, endorsing the Palestinian destruction of the ancient walls of Jericho. So what do they base their, their uh, calling it a Palestinian heritage site, what are they basing that on? The Palestinians submit proposals, and the UN has an automatic anti-Israel bias where they can get anything. I mean, they can get the Temple Mount called a Palestinian heritage site, and it's part of an ongoing Palestinian campaign. They have a list of sites, the Mount of Blessings and Curses, they plan to submit a variety of ancient Jewish sites, uh, which under the Oslo Peace Accords were recognized as sites that are of importance to Israel, that the Palestinians pledged to conserve and protect, and now they are destroying and erasing the Jewish history. So what should Christians do about this? What should uh, Americans do about this? So uh, I think every country that votes for this is taking a shameful position. More countries have come to understand that uh, what is happening here is clear anti-Semitism. And I think it's important to encourage one's government to do what the United States did six years ago and say, we cannot sit at this table. We cannot be members of such an anti-Semitic club, a club that denies the basic biblical history uh, of the Jewish people, of the Judeo-Christian uh, concept. And the United States, of course, uh, I think has been suckered and should come back out, should quit again. And every country that's committed to honesty, archaeological preservation, fairness, uh, should do the same. Professor Kantorovich, thank you for joining us and sharing this very important uh, subject with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Up next, Israelis calling for the government and the international community to get tougher against terror. Israeli security officials are predicting ongoing terror attacks to increase as the country observes the biblical holidays. Citizens caught in the middle want more support. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has that story. 
This year, terrorists have already murdered more than 30 Israelis. Most of the attacks have taken place in the West Bank, which is biblical Judea and Samaria. We are facing something like uh, 200, around 200 alerts every day for terrorism, the intelligence uh, radar. We have witnessed over 200 trials of terror acts. And of course, the rate of fatalities is the highest uh, in, in the last few years. Reserve Major General Israel Ziv says those carrying out these attacks are mainly young people in their 20s. He adds, while they may not be part of organized terror groups like Hamas and Islamic Jihad, those groups are smuggling weapons, ammunition and money into Palestinian areas. This equipment finds itself to the hands of those youngsters and by the internet they find all the instructions how to carry terror attack on vehicles or on uh, the settlements or all kinds of options that they have. And it's up to their decision, you know, to, to take the act. Ziv says this often makes it harder for Israel to track planned attacks. Adding to this chaos is the growing weakness of the governing Palestinian Authority. We see that they are more uh, busy within themselves. Most of them are, are corrupted. They are dealing with, with personal businesses and personal issues, and they are not running cities and the situation in the streets. While Israel mounted a major military offensive in July, Jewish community leaders in Judea and Samaria are calling on their government to take tougher action. There's a relationship here as if each terror attack is a one-time event. They're relating to terror like there's an attack and then another attack and then another. It's simply not right. We have a full war here. What we have is a real threat. And we came here to say to our government that we demand to go to war. We want to win this war. We demand that the government of Israel takes action against these terrorists, like the U.S. and Britain would take action against terrorists that are firing rockets and shooting at women and children that travel on the roads. Many attacks are happening along Route 60, known as the Way of the Biblical Patriarchs, traveled by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Many of the Jewish settlements, which much of the world considers illegal, are established there today. We're building on the land that's ours. We aren't confiscating land. We're building in places that we bought or that belong to the country. We're doing it according to the law. Council leader Shlomo Neeman questions how foreign governments can try to stop Jews from building houses in biblical Judea. This thing is also given a tailwind to terror and it backs up the Palestinian Authority. Council leader Israel Gantz calls on the international community to shift its focus to helping fight the terrorism. We must fight with the terror and we want to, uh, uh, to thank for our friends, for all the world that support the fighting in the terror because we all know the terror can start here and grow for all the world. Up next, desperate souls living in tents next to devastated villages in Morocco. CBN's Operation Blessing takes on dangerous roads to get there. The worst earthquake in more than 100 years has devastated regions of Morocco and left more than 3,000 dead. Many remote areas are extremely difficult to reach, but Operation Blessing made a perilous journey to help those in need. Take a look. Many of the roads to remote villages in the mountains of Morocco have been impassable for days. The Operation Blessing team convoy had to stop at times so heavy machinery could clear the roads, with the danger of rock slides possible at any moment. As we drew closer to the epicenter, we witnessed increasing destruction and thousands of people living in tents on the side of the road. When we got to the village itself, we saw a bird's eye view of the extent of the destruction. After a five hour ride, one flat tire, and several stops along the way because of rock slides, Operation Blessings team made it here to this remote village on its mission of mercy to bring hope and help. We're one of the few first one, you know, to arrive here in, the, in this couple days that uh, the earthquake happened. So we, we are very happy that we made it. We made amazing connections here to support these villages that are unrich in this point. And we're bringing vital supplies, food, water, solar lamp. There is no electricity here. We are here because we can show the love of, of Christ, first of all, as you know. This is one of the thousands of buildings that were destroyed or damaged by the earthquake. You can see how destructive it really was. This one is personal because the brother of one of the Operation Blessing volunteers 
died in this place. Rashid looked to the house where his brother had died. This is the place where he died and we're really heartbroken. The only thing he left is his sandal. The people here don't have anything. Everything was destroyed. So you see the people gathering and helping each other in these villages. Not only my brother died, but many others died too. In all, 47 people in the village died, including a pregnant woman. This is what God puts in our heart, just to go and help these people. And I'm really like, probably we like meet with you guys and be like working together. It's just a blessing for us to have you here with us. Mm. I want to thank Rachid for opening his village, his house, so we can, we can come and help you guys. We are with him and your families in this very difficult time of sadness. I love to be a part of Operation Blessing. This is what God put in my heart to help these people. This help is made possible by those supporting Operation Blessing. So I would say really thank you and God bless you guys. And we're just really happy to have you with us because we need you now. Chris Mitchell, CBN News at the village of Tagantef, Morocco. Coming up, a documentary maker giving voice to the settlers in biblical Judea and Samaria, why he wants their stories told. As a counter to what seems to be biased coverage about the Jewish communities living in biblical Judea and Samaria, one filmmaker is presenting their side of the story. Our Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl spoke with him about his new documentary. Roger Walters, thank you for joining us on Jerusalem Dateline. Well, it's really a pleasure to be with you today. Um, I'm looking forward to it a lot. So you've written a, or produced a documentary called Dissettling the Facts, A Deeper Look at Israeli Settlements. Uh, tell us why you did this. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a kind of an anti-BDS uh, uh, documentary because I've supported um, the settlers, uh, producers uh, for, for some years now, buying their products via Lev Ha'alam. And, um, you know, these people are just regular guys producing goods and, and farmers, and they're being, you know, demonized um, worldwide uh, at every opportunity. So I just felt they needed some kind of defense. Okay. So um, tell us a little bit about the documentary. So we, we started off in the UK uh, interviewing uh, some uh, legal brains and people who understand about the history of the formation of, of Israel uh, and Zionism. And uh, then we took off and we spent um, a best part of a month in Israel touring around Judea and Samaria. Uh, interviewing um, not only settlers, but also some Palestinians, quite a few Palestinians. Um, we uh, also interviewed uh, a couple of Palestinian activists um, who, who obviously gave us their perspective. Um, and we really trying to give the perspective from the settlers' point of view, from the communities and the people who live in these areas. So to invest this much time and energy in something, you must be an Israel lover. How, how much, how did that happen? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I think it happened in, in 1967 when uh, the Six-Day War broke out and uh, a, a very close uh, friend of mine who worked, we worked in an office together, said, we just got to go to Israel tomorrow and, and help the cause, you know, help, help. Israelis fight. Um, I thought he was a bit crazy. Uh, however, um, we did sign up and his mother wouldn't let him go. So I ended up going on my own as a, as a Mitna Dev. Um, and I spent a couple of years in Israel, 60, 67, 68. And um, basically, I fell in love with Israel. But um, I, uh, I sometimes wonder why I didn't stay. But I think that uh, I needed to finish my education in the UK and, and not enough golf courses for me in Israel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So what do you want people to take away from your film? I think I need them to understand 
who these settlers are, um, that they're not all ideologues, they're not crazies, um, they don't want to beat up Palestinians, they want to be friends with Palestinians. They, they, they know that when they are friends with them, and they have been friends with them, and I've seen when I was friends with them in the, in the 60s, that we can live together. Uh, and, and as uh, I think Jabari said, you know, it's only the leadership which is the issue, uh, because the people on the ground, both the Israelis and the Palestinians, are, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're both the Semites, you know, so they should get on well together. And, and the Palestinians def definitely prosper um, working with Israelis. Roger, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, there is, actually. Uh, one of the other reasons I created this documentary was to try to educate the the child, my children, my grandchildren, and my peers' children, who really are kind of being tormented to to, to demonise Israel uh, as being apartheid and colonialist, and I and there's nobody giving them the correct and the true uh, picture of what is actually happening in Israel um, and in Judea and Samaria. And so that was a big motivation for me to try to get this documentary seen by youngsters, you know, teenagers and, and early 20s. Um, but also it appears that there are many older people who don't understand the history of these times and the creation of Israel. So it's it's a tremendous uh, um, feat, feat of ours to have to be able to educate a lot of people. Now, how can people uh, see your documentary? Well, they just go uh, to YouTube and type in Settling the Facts. Uh, it's as simple as that. And, and that will come up free of charge. Okay, great. Roger Walters, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. And please keep those who have suffered so much loss in Libya and Morocco in your prayers. They're fighting for their lives right now in your prayers and support for Operation Blessing can make a difference. And remember, you can follow us on social media and you can also access CBN content through our CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blasts. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.